please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname um, that he called himself different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag by the way you will notice in this story i called it the united nations of red flags it is so many red flags that i mean you would have thought i was colorblind because i ignored all of them so anyway back to the story we met around march 4th we exchanged phone numbers he called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time in the first phone call he told me that he had just moved to georgia from california from san diego his job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in georgia not gonna say the name and so we also talked about his childhood he told me um, he grew up in Philly he's from Philly both of his parents were deceased this is the first phone call both of his parents were deceased his father um, was a Philadelphia police officer his mom was a teacher he also told me he um, went he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family he had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs! But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I, I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So he told me, you know, I just, I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing be and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now, I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I really would like to move out there. And so I thought, you know, this is, that's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. You just moved here. He was like, I don't really know too, too many people here because I spend all my time at work and you know, this job is really demanding. So that was our first phone call. We talked more. He talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, he eventually asked me out on a date. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. 
I was excited. Like, I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully, he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully, he looks like his pictures. So, on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I gotta get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused, he got quiet, and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pen. So I dropped the pen, and he came to the gas station. Came to the gas station, got out the car, and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive. Because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, um... Oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that his ex-wife they had she had um, two children, a boy and a girl, who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about twenty, and he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids, um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so, you know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still wanna be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So this is just setting the stage again. That first conversation was we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right. Now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, Hey, I found a plate, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, he followed me to the, to the tire place and then helped me get a tire paid for it. So I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory over in perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just this. Oh my God, I had butterflies. That that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. So I had butterflies, and um, we go in there's a long wait and so we sit outside and we just talk and the conversation's great and this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for he tells me you know i'm i believe at the time he was 42 he was like i want to get married and it'd be for real he's like my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away and I want that. I want marriage, family, a house. Like that is what I want. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm as a man, I'm ready to get married, but I want it to be for real because the first time, you know, it really hurt me when she cheated on me. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, what is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. 
And this is the end of. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the, the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which, um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I don't know the name of the song by the, t well, by the time this video posts, I will put the name at the bottom. I can't remember the song. I just remember that John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. And I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. So during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there. He went to San Diego State. He played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know, life, he loved it out there. So he stayed. Um, that's when he joined the company. Um, and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that while he was doing arena football the team that he was on won a championship but again keep in mind i don't know anything about arena football so i was like okay i didn't know that they had championships and he was like you know he got a little offended like yeah they got championships and you know he was on that team so he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those, it's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon, I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it, why? So we talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time somebody I worked with that will come back later um and he seemed real cool about it. he was like you know that was before me and blah 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 um so the conversation was good midnight comes and um I go home yes I went home we ended up talking talking and talking mind you our first date was March 7th and within about two and a half weeks Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked every day. We went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place, which he had like a studio type of situation. Like it clearly, where he was staying, um, I was like, it's like a studio apartment, but he kept telling me like, this is temporary because I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me, he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house so i was just like okay this is definitely temporary like he's not trying to stay here long term and she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry, you know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read it. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, 
are you we going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house first mistake i made well there's a lot but this was a mistake i made so ladies caution moment during one of our dates um because keep in mind in those two weeks we were seeing each other quite a bit um nothing physical or anything like that just two people who were who i thought were really on some all right let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something he came to my house when he came to my house i had a three bedroom two and a half bath townhome he was in a studio now i'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened so some t some things i'm probably going to insert what i was thinking and the mistake i made can i turn this off no okay i still need that um and i say that to say that i did not realize inviting him to my home um probably made his eyes go oh shit she's a keeper she got this three bedroom two and a half bath townhouse and i'm in like a little studio yeah let me let me let me go ahead and pursue this what i need to do to quarantine here the decision was made quarantine at my house so we the state went on lockdown he came and stayed with me um in my home and for the most part be in the initial beginning it was fine it was it was fine the reason why i hesitate is because i grew up in the church so for me it was really like an internal struggle of bruh you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband and now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband like it was it was a struggle for me because i knew better and i and don't come for me i'm just telling you the way i grew up it was like that it was not sitting right with me but at the same time i didn't want to quarantine by myself i did not want to so there we go um so he moved in we talked about the bills let me clear something up that i said in the other video where i said he paid all the bills he paid all the household bills he did not pay my car payment my cell phone or my car insurance he paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars um he paid the utility bills and on and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager i was like wow okay so you got money um <laughs> and so he paid he paid all the household bills so my check really was just taking care of me myself and i and I am not, this is where it's not going to make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of april's bills before april even comes because this was still march so we're living together and i'm cooking i'm cleaning he's helping to cook and clean and then we have a conversation about house is he still going to buy a house just for him or is he going to buy a house where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing work be official get married have a family so the question now on the table is what are we going to do because i didn't want to stay in um riverdale georgia i did not want to raise a family there i refused to have a baby um in clayton county so the decision was made let's start looking for a house for both of us remember he was already looking for a house for him but then he was like you know what we're together i plan to marry you let's look for a for a, a family home for the two of us he was like this is how much i was approved for that's when he showed me the chase paperwork um it was a letter stating that he and it had the chase emblem at the top he showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 so 
we go to Home Depot, we go to Lowe's. I'm choosing all these appliances. He's taking pictures of the, of the, um, the SKU number. We have representatives helping us. And he basically explained to them, hey, we're, we're buying a house. Um, we should be closing sometime in June. Can we order this stuff now? Can I, can I put a hold on it? Like, what can we do? Because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery. I stood there. As the Home Depot rep said, we can hold it in our warehouse. Like, you can buy something and we can hold it. People do it all the time, especially with COVID. So I watched him pay. Um, I want to say it was about three or it was either three fifty or five hundred. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them, and they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this, so I was like, okay, good deal. Like we got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture and find um actual furniture so we went all around rooms to go we went to ashley furniture we went to american signature and i i i saw all these things that i wanted again he's taking pictures of it he was like i can go online and order it i didn't think anything of it because again i just saw that we held the appliances so i was like okay that's that's fine um so April turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, Oh, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. And he's like, he's like 15 houses backed up, so it'll be a while. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording um, audio diaries. I don't know why I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, a, in an audio diary and I still have them and I would I would save them by the date and um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind so I was like I knew I knew there was something something was nagging me like mm. But I, I kept pushing it out of my mind. I was like, you saw, th this is what I reminded myself. You saw him pay for the appliances. You know the house is under contract. You know that he told you that um, he's the one who put the house under contract. Why would, like I remember saying to myself, why would he lie about that? This is so easy to verify. Why would he lie about that? Have you caught him in any other lie? And at the time, the answer was no. Um, so I really was like, maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do. Like, I, I was questioning myself and then answering my own questions. So, inspection didn't happen. Around mid-May, I found out I was pregnant. May 2020. When I found out I was pregnant, he was ecstatic and I was like, oh shit. The reason why I was oh shit is because number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was, I, I felt like it was probably going to be a high-risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that nagged I cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me there was a lot of internal <coughs> struggle in between my family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point I told them you know that I was pregnant um went to the doctor everything looked good um but again because it was COVID he couldn't go in with me 
um, into the actual room. So, you know, doing any sort of ultrasound, doing the blood test because my HCG levels were really high. So the doctor was like, hey, it might be twins. We don't know yet. Um, you're still kind of early, you know, along. Um, they gave me a due date. The due date was January 26th of 2021. Um, so, yeah. Uh, May found out I was pregnant so there was now more of a push into we got to get a house we got to get the fuck up out of here I'm not having a baby in Riverdale okay nothing against Riverdale but I ain't having a baby in Riverdale so we need we need to we need to find out what's going on with this house and so he was very he was on top of it he had an answer for everything um, he was like, you know, I'm gonna call and find out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later, oh, they're going to do inspection on the, on the house, like in two days. So I was just like, okay, keep in mind, I'm, I'm taking his word for it. I'm taking his word for all this. So he's like, they're going to do an inspection. Um, once we get the inspection report back, then we will know what you know what we are going to be responsible for what what are we getting ourselves into so um <laughs> i guess they did an inspection he showed me an inspection report um the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced which he i remember he was very happy about um, and the issues that they, that there were for the house were minor. It was not, it was not a bad, cause we did have a discussion about it. He was like, it's not, it's nothing that we can't handle. Then he said that we were set to close, um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This is what he's telling me. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so for some reason, again, there's still that nagging part for some reason I didn't start packing I anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving I've done it enough in my life I hate moving but I did not start packing up that house at all I was just like you know I'm pregnant my body was changing so fast that it was like I can barely keep my eyes open half the day um and so no I didn't start packing and I remember I did record, again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Um, and so... I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet because that's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking, what if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't get, what if he's lying? But again, there goes that thought process of why would he lie about this? Like, who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not? And then he's showing you all this paperwork. Like, come on, you can't be that jaded that you don't even believe what's in front of you. All right, so now we're gonna go into part five. <laughs>